This video covers subsets and elements. An object belonging to a set is called an element. We use the symbol epsilon for an element. Kind of looks like an E, but it's a Greek letter. So for example, we could say five is an element of the set one, two, three, four, five, because you can see five is inside that set. One is not an element of the set 10, 29, 36, and 41. So you can see we still use the epsilon. We just put a line through it to say it's not an element. When I look at the set x, where x is an integer less than 9, I can see that 2 belongs to that set because 2 is an integer and it's less than 9. Whereas 12 would not be an element of that same set, where x is an integer less than 9, since 12 is greater than 9. If I didn't want to talk about numbers, we could talk, also talk about something like spring being an element of the set X where X is a season of the year. Notice we did not put set brackets around elements. Our second definition is subset. A is a subset of B if every element of A is also an element of B. For notation, um, this is our symbol. It kind of looks like a U put over on its side with a line underneath. So this says A is a subset of B. So for example, the set 3, 5 is a subset of the set 1, 3, 5, 7, 9, because both 3 and 5 are in the set on the right 1, 3, 5, 7, 9. Um, also, the set 1 is a subset of the set X, where X is a natural number less than 5. We could also have the set 2, 4, 6, 8, which we can see is even whole numbers or even natural numbers is a subset of the set X where X is a whole number. So the even numbers would be part of the whole number. So everything in the even numbers would also be a part of the whole numbers. Notice this time we did use brackets. So when I'm looking at elements, I don't need the brackets and I don't want to use the brackets. But when I talk about subsets, it's absolutely necessary that I use set brackets. So let's cover a few properties of subsets. Um, the empty set, which has nothing in it, is a subset of every set. We also um, have that a set is always a subset of itself. So let's look at a small set, A, that just is composed of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. We can say the empty set is a subset of A. So the set can nothing, containing nothing, all the elements of nothing are in A. I know that's a little weird, um, but you just want to always use it to say, I can always form this subset. And then A is a subset of itself. Here's kind of how you can think of it is, um, say we're talking about our class, right? So our online class. And so that would be a set, right? And then I could do subsets. I could say, let's put the set of all the um, males in a set. Let's put the set of all females in a set. Let's put the set of all people over 20 in a set. So I can make these subsets up. I could say, let's make a subset of all the people in our class that are less than 10 years old. Guaranteed, even though my sets change every year, I can guarantee nobody's under 10, so that would be a subset containing nothing, right? So it's still allowed, it's still a subset I could form, it just would be that nothing was in there. So I want you to decide if each statement is true or false, and these should be quick, you don't need to pause it, you should be able to look at it and decide. So this first one says, is the set 137 a subset of 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9? Well, the answer is no, because I'm missing the 1. Since I don't have the 1 on the right, um, it can't be a subset. Um, the empty set is a subset of the empty set. Yes, the empty set is a subset of every set, so it's a subset of itself. Um, the set ABC is a subset of ABCDE. And that's absolutely true. Or then A, B, C, D, E as a set, a subset of A, B, C. That one's false. So what I did was just flip those. Um, since we read left to right, having that bigger set on the left says no way does that work. All right, so um, here's the same thing again. Just some U tries to decide if each statement is true or false. And you can pause it for a minute. It shouldn't take you very long. Um, and just decide if the, which ones are true or which ones are false. All right, so now let's check your answers. So the first one says, four is an element of the set one, two, three, four, five. True, I can see that four is an element of the set on the right. Um, then I just changed it slightly and put a set bracket around the four and said, is the set four an element of one, two, three, four, five? And the answer is no because of those set brackets. So you don't wanna use the set brackets when we're talking about elements. 
Um, then I said is for a subset of the set 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. And that answer is also no, because 4 is not a set, so it can't be a subset. I can fix that, though, by adding um, set symbols around the 4 and then say, is the set 4 a subset of 1, 2, 3, 4, 5? And the answer would be yes. There's also something called a proper subset. <clears throat> um, so let's just go through the definition first, then we'll talk about it a little more. A is a proper subset of B if every element of A is an element of B and, this is the important part, there's an element in B that's not in A. So now when I'm writing the notation, I don't have that underline anymore. I just have um, A with this subset thing B, but it doesn't allow equality anymore. So the difference between A being a subset of B and A being a proper subset of B is that A and B cannot be equal. If A is a proper subset of B, then there has to be some additional element in B that I don't have in A. This is tricky, so let's take a closer look and see if you can just see the little differences. So look at this one. I have the set XY, and here I'm showing it's a proper subset, and I can tell it's proper because there's no underline, of the set WXYZ. This is true. This is a proper subset because I can see W and Z on the right, and it's not on the left. Um, when I look at the set AB, and then I have is a subset of AB, this is just a regular subset. It is not proper because the sets are equal, so I have to have that line underneath it um, so that I can allow equality. So when you have a proper subset, it wouldn't matter if you use the subset with a line or the subset without the line, but when I refer to a set being a subset of itself, it would be important to use that underlined symbol. So um, just to give some practice to that and see if you're getting it, why don't you do these, what is this, four of them, and decide, can you use the proper subset, the regular subset, neither or both to make the statement true? You probably should pause this one, it may take a second to do, um, and then come back and let's check the answers together. All right, so um, answers. For the first one, one, three, five, as I said, is um, a subset of the set 2x plus 1, where x is a whole number less than 3. Um, be careful with this one. And yeah, let's see if I can write a little bit for you, because that might help out. Um, here, a whole number means I start at 0. So I'm doing 2 times 0 plus 1, which equals 1. So I can see, hey, here's my first number, and I have it on the left. Um, and then the next number would be 1, so I do 2 times 1 plus 1. Um, 2 and 1 is 3, so there's my second number. That works. Um, then 2, 2 times 2 plus 1 is 5, and I stop, okay, and I see 5 and 5. Less than 3 does not include 3, so my only numbers I'm plugging in are 0, 1, and 2. I get 1, 3, 5. So these sets are equal, which is why I have to use this, um, this subset symbol, because they're exactly the same. I have to show they have equality. Okay. This one, I have A, 2, 3, 7. Well, I see I have an A, I have a 2, I have a 3, I have a 7. So I can use the proper subset symbol here, because there are extra elements. I could use the regular subset symbol here, um, it doesn't matter. If I can use proper subset, I can always use regular subset. That's okay. On um, here, 9 and 10 as a set with 9, 10, 10, 9 as a set, they're really the same. Remember we talked about repetition and order don't matter. So repeating the 10 twice, putting them out of order doesn't make any difference. These are the same set, so I have to use this set where it allows equality. And then this one says... Um, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, x is a whole number between 12 and 16. Well, between means it's 13, 14, 15. So I can see that um, this would be neither. I don't know why I didn't write anything before. So that's a really bad neither, but you can still see that it says neither. Oh, and I wrote both things, then there we go. And let me actually take the writing off there in case you want to be able to look at that. So there's my explanations in there if you need them. Um, <clears throat> all right. Cardinality. 
We've talked about cardinality before, so let's just remind you what that is. The cardinality of a set is the number of elements in the set. And remember that we use this n to represent number. So we have n of a to say how many elements are in the set. So let's just go back and make sure we get that. Um, so let's say a is the set of months in the year. Then the number of elements in a would be 12, because we know there's 12 months in a year. Or b is the set of the United States senators. Well, there's two senators from every state. We have 50 states, so that says that we have 100 senators. Um, C is 1, 2, 3, 4, blah, 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 up to 15. So you can easily see that um, N of C is 15. I want you to be careful here because then look at, I went to D and I said start at 0, then 1, 2, 3, all the way up to 36. Do you see that 1 through 36 is 36 numbers? you got to count this 0 that makes the number in D 37. So always pay attention to the starting number. The starting number will make a difference. If you start at 1 and go to a number by counting by 1s, it'll be exactly what the last number is. If you start at 0 or a different number, then you're going to have to remember to add those numbers in. Um, this one kind of close, 3, 6, 9, it goes up to 300. This is kind of like 1 times 3, 2 times 3, 3 times 3, up to 100 times 3, so I have 100 elements. All right, so think about that. Think about what we just did. Think about all the things we've been talking about with sets. And I want you to find the number of elements in these three sets, A, B, and C, and then come back and check. Okay, so here's some answers. Um, with A, I have 7, 12, 14, 19, 25. They don't have any pattern to them, but you can count. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. See, there's five elements. With B, I said 1, 1, 2, 2, 3, 3, 4, 4. I wanted you to remember to think about the fact that repetition doesn't matter, so I have 8. Don't count that repetition. It doesn't make any difference. And then with C, days of the week, there are 7. All right. <clears throat> Related to that is we can form subsets. So we've been talking about subsets, but we said, well, what if we just got exhausted with how many could I do? So here's a formula for you, and one of the few formulas you have in this particular chapter. So it says if the number of elements of A is n, then A is going to have 2 to the n subsets. Let's say, well, what does that mean? So let's start with the empty set. The empty set doesn't have any elements, right? It's empty. So the number of elements it has is 0. So if I take 2 to the 0, which is 1, it tells me how many number of subsets we have, which is um, true, right? If I don't have, if I have the empty set, the only subset is the empty set, so I have one subset, and it says I should have one. All right, so what if I have the set 3? Okay, the set 3 only has one element, so n of a is 1. My formula said it should have 2 to the 1, which is two subsets, which it does. It has the empty set, and it has itself. Right. Remember those properties that we just talked about? We said every set will have the empty set in itself, so I'm always thinking it has at least two, so don't forget to put those two in as we keep making this bigger. So let's say I put two set, I'm, I'm sorry, two elements in the set X and Y. All right. Now let's try to figure out all the subsets. So I have the empty set, I have the set itself, but I could just have X, I could just have Y. Um, again, notice the number of elements in our subset is 2, and we have 2 squared is 4 subsets. Um, also notice, I don't write x, y, then y, x, because that's the same thing. I don't do x, x, y, y, because that wouldn't matter. Just keep it really simple. So I want you to try. Here's up to 3. I want you to write down all the subsets, and then just keep in mind how many subsets you should have, so you can check it and make sure you got them all. This may take a little bit, so I do want you to pause me, write them down, then come back and look at what I got. Okay, <clears throat> so here's what I have. I have the empty set, because I always do. I have just one, just two, just three. So I have all the single elements. I could put one and two together. I could put one and three together. I could put two and three together. And then I could do the whole thing. All right. So now let's switch. Instead of exhaustively listing them, because it gets kind of long. If you look at the last one, that was... Um, we had, here I'll say n of a, because I don't remember what I called it, but we'll say there were three. Oops. So I had three elements, and then 2 cubed was 8. That was my number of subsets, and I have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. So what we always want to think about is how many elements, and then do 2 to that power to get the number of subsets. So as I get bigger, I just want to know how many subsets I don't need you to list them for me. So this one, I have A, B, C, D, E, that's 5. So if I do 2 to the 5th, that would give me 32 possible subsets. That's a lot to write out. We won't do that. 
Let's look at this one. I have the set B, which is red, green, blue, yellow, orange, pink, and purple. And if I want to know what are all my subsets, I would first say, well, look, how many elements do I have? I have seven. If I take two and raise it to the seventh, that's 128. That's a lot of subsets. I would never have you write that out. Okay, so let's think about, well, why do we care, right? That should always be our motivational thing of what am I going to do with this. So let's talk about some application. Um, and, I don't know, college students always think pizza. So let's say we had a cheese pizza, and it can be ordered with the following toppings. Pepperoni, sausage, pineapple, spinach, peppers, onion, artichoke, mushrooms, bacon, tomatoes, and olives. So I just thought of a bunch of toppings. And then I said, how many ways could a customer order the pizza? So this is the same as how many subsets can I make because I can think, well, I could do nothing. Right? I could get the empty set and just have a cheese pizza. That's fine. I could order one topping. So I could just get pepperoni or just get sausage, right? So I could do all the things one by himself. Or I could get two, right? Maybe you want um, spinach and artichoke, right? So maybe there's two. Or maybe you want three toppings. Maybe you want four. So what this does is it looks at all the different ways you can choose toppings. One at a time, two at a time, three at a time. Order doesn't matter because it doesn't matter if you order pepperoni, sausage, sausage, pepperoni, you're getting the same pizza. We're not putting repetition in there because we're not double ordering um, or anything like that. So the first thing we would want to do is we would want to count the number of toppings I had there. So if you added up the ones I made up, um, that's 11 different elements. So if I go 2 to the 11th, that's 2,000. 48 different ways to order pizza. So this is great for marketing, right? If we're thinking about marketing and you say, well, I have 11 toppings, but would you want to say we have 11 toppings or would you want to say you could order 2,048 different um, pizzas? That's without starting to put in the size of the pizza, the different crusts you can do, right? So this is good for marketing just to say, look at all this variation you have at, at my store or my restaurant. Um, so same thing, I want you to try this one, and this made me think of those Diet Coke or regular Coke things that you can go to at fast food restaurants, and you can add the um, different kind of flavorings in it. So I said, if you can add as many flavors as you want to a soda from the following choices, how many combinations of drinks can be made? So again, think of subsets and think, I could add one of them, I could add two of them, I could add three, right? How many different ways could you do it? You could add nothing. So try that. How many different flavor combinations are possible for this um, soda machine? All right, so hopefully you started by looking at my little picture there and say, um, I can see that's 12 different flavor choices. So we can do two to the 12th, which is 4,000. 96 different combinations. I'm thinking some of those aren't going to taste so awesome, but it does show you great variation from a little bit of choice.